All right, everyone, welcome to the download portion of the video. Uh, here's the packaging that I've been using lately. It's got a nice logo. It'll have the uh, model information on the back. Um, then put this off to the side. And we have our mod, the Snowdrift 21700. This is a 21700 uh, 100 watt box mod. As we can see here, it has the um, EHI SX735J. We can see the uh, joystick here. Um, around the side, we see the Snowcat Mods logo, uh, and we also see the cutouts uh, that have two purposes. One, it helps to uh, provide function to the battery door, and two, I think it adds a nice look. It has the Snowcat Mods logos here. Then round, we go around and we see the rounded back, and then we see that the other side is mirrored here. At the top here, we have our 510 that I use from Stimmy Vapor. I've been using it for a long time. Overall, it's been uh, quite reliable. It is spring-loaded, um, and then we can see the diameter here. So this can fit a maximum diameter of a 26 millimeter Addy, so should be good for um, anything from a 22 up to a 26. And if you don't mind a little bit of overhang, you can even do a 28. Uh, then let's look at the bottom. Uh, so this is the bottom and here we see a plug. Um, this is to, for some of the internals and it makes it easier to, to get access to there. Um, that's what the plug does. And then the hole itself allows you to get a tool inside um, so that you can easily service uh, the 510 using um, these two things here. So we have a, a quarter inch driver and a 12 millimeter deep socket. All right, so you can basically get this in here up into the top of the mod and then unscrew the 510. All right, and for those of you who may be new to Snowcat Mods, I'm going to talk a little bit about the battery door. Uh, if you have owned another Snowcat Mods before, chances are you've seen this design. Um, I've been incorporating it into basically my entire product line, and I'll just take a quick moment to explain it. But that being said, this door has been tested through hundreds and hundreds of different units and different designs, so by now it, it works pretty well. So the way that you uh, take, the, take the battery out is just by simply freeing up one side and then just kind of rolling it out. That's the easiest way to do it. Um, when it breaks in, you can just kind of go directly in and out. And then when you want to put the battery in, we make sure that we have these points of uh, all touching at the same time. And then, excuse me, so the points are all touching at the same time and then we make them clear all at the same time. And here we go. No rattle. This has been designed to um, avoid rattle and wiggle. Um, then let's take this apart. Uh, you can notice that the battery is held in place by this door. Okay, there's this little top in the bottom which keeps it from sliding out. Um, and this just makes it really easy to get the battery in and out. Um, and also, if you have a cool battery wrap that you want to show off uh, you do not need to use the door right you can run this uh, without the door it open battery mode and then also um, you know you can even put the door on like this okay so works really well lots of different ways that you can use it um, and uh, I've been really happy with this design so let's talk about size uh, as we can see on the left-hand side of your screen, we have an AV2, an Avalanche V2. Um, it is the mechanical squonk mod that I've been selling for a long time now. Uh, we do have it in a new colorway, which is um, Alumide, uh, which is available now. But I want to compare the size of these two. So if we look, um, the, the Snowdrift is basically the same size as an avalanche v2 so if you own an avalanche v2 or if you ever held one or seen one you have almost an, a, a perfect reference of the size 
Um, the one major difference is that the Avalanche V2, V2 holds a 25 diameter atomizer, and this is just one millimeter wider for a 26. Um, so that means that for a 21700 100 watt box mod, uh, this mod is actually really quite small. Um, and I'll show you in a moment, but it looks good with anything from a 22 to a 28 on it. Let's look at the snowdrift with some atomizers here. So we can see uh, we have a, I believe a Valkyrie uh, Mini, I think, which is a 25 millimeter atomizer. Uh, and you can see that it, this one especially fits really, really well on this mod. Um, and it looks great. All right, and now let's look at another atomizer. Uh, this is a 22 millimeter atomizer. And I think it looks good. It looks great on there. Um, you know, it's it's pretty nice that a uh, 22 and a 26 millimeter atomizer uh, look good on this. So this is pretty versatile. And the next thing that we'll look at is an RDA. So we have an Asgard Mini here, uh, no beauty ring um, at 25. And I, I personally really like the way this looks. Um, and I'll talk more about it in the chip section of the video, but this mod is actually very capable for dripping. Um, especially if you enable boost mode, you know, you put this on 100 watts, it hits pretty good. Um, and then, you know, I like even more power, so you can go in and change the settings and, and even make this a ca very capable dripper, and it looks great too. All right, everybody, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the chip. Now, one thing I'll tell you is I've been having trouble getting a good uh, crisp image of the screen. Um, however, the screen itself is is very, very good, crisp, and clear in person. Um, but I'm going to do my best to explain to you what, what is on this chip. And I'm not going to go super in-depth. Uh, I'm just going to go over the basics of how to use the chip so that people have a, a frame of reference to explore more. Uh, so this is the SX735J chip. It uses a joystick for control, and it has a USB-C charging port. Uh, and the charging port is nice and sturdy. feels really good. has a nice click to it. Um, <clears throat> so let's just take a look at the screen. At the very top, we can see this little bar here. Uh, this bar it indicates the battery. We also see a battery percentage in the top right corner. In the top left corner, this tells us our curve mode that we're in. So right now it says NEU for neutral. Um, we also have right here above the wattage, we have a puff counter. Uh, this goes up to 9,999. But if you go into the menus, which I'll show you in a moment, there is up to 900,999 uh, hits available. So you can get up to one shy of a million um, for your hit counter. Then here we see our resistance and it's it's nice and big. Uh, on the bottom here we see these bars. Uh, these bars will change. They will become higher or lower almost like an equalizer to represent the curve mode that you're in. It shows your voltage, which I think is very nice. And also it will show you the amperage that your build is going to be firing at in the bottom right hand corner. I really like that. It's like a good safety feature. You know, you know, if your battery can only handle 25 amps and it says 32 uh, amps firing, then you know that there is something that needs to be adjusted there. Okay, uh, so let's just talk a little bit about how to navigate with this chip. So right now we are just in um, you know, in the home screen mode or in the firing mode. Uh, and, uh, so I'm going to click in to access. Now this get, tells me turns red because I'm going to cha change the wattage. And the one thing I really like here is they give you prompts. So it, so we can see here that pushing, uh, from this illustration that down on the joystick goes down and up on the joystick goes up. So it takes a little bit of the guesswork out of, um, out of this. So I'm going to go down. Okay, it does go in 0.1 watt increments. I am going to be honest, I don't love that, but uh, the chip itself is very, very good. Okay, and then we can go up. All right, then we can either push in the center to, uh, oh, we hit fire uh, to select the wattage. Okay, um, then we can press down 
on the joystick. And this will take us into, we can see the curves screen. So as I mentioned before, we are in neutral, then we can edit. That's for, there's two profiles that you can edit and then there's the exit. So let's go into neutral and let's change it. Okay, so let's go to, we have soft. So this is going to take your hit, gradually increasing the power. Okay, uh, the this is one where you can customize. So we can see the edit lights up. Uh, there's another one that we can customize. And then we have strong. Uh, so I actually use strong quite often, especially when I have really big beefy builds that, that heat up slow, or I just wanna get some extra wattage. Uh, this can actually, according to what the chip says, if you put all the these bars, if you edit them to go all the way up, it will hit 150 watts. Um, now I will say I have done it and I have, you know, it reads, it says it's firing at 150 watts. And I do think that on a fresh battery, I did get 150 watts. However, after maybe one or two hits, it starts declining. Um, however, I did feel that this could consistently deliver 130 watts um, by going through the curves mode, okay? Now we can see that we've selected our curve and before where it was neutral, these lines were all flat. Now we can see the curves mode more clearly represented here, okay? All right, now let's just kind of, I want to show you two little sort of uh, changes that you can do. So if you hold left from the home screen for, I think, five seconds, you will change the theme. So there's two themes here. You can't customize the theme other than the two that are available. Um, this one is maybe slightly less information, but the numbers are bigger. We see a battery bar with a percentage. We see our wattage. We see our resistance. We see our curve again. Then we see voltage and amps again here. Uh, so this is actually a, a little bit easier screen to read. Uh, there's The numbers are bigger. So if you like this, you can. And I'm going to hold this to go back to the old mode because this is what I prefer. Now, when we hold right, we can get into the main screen, uh, the main menu rather. And we have several ones. So we have system off, so you can do a hard off mode, wattage. This is where you can change between wattage, temperature control, and um, voltage. Uh, we have a puff counter. So as I said before, if we go in here, uh, you can see that you know this only has eight hits on it, but um, this is what is displayed on the screen. So, uh, out, I think it was four digits, but we can see here in the life counter, we have six digits. So one shy, uh, one hit shy of a million. Okay. And I'm going to go back tweaks. Uh, this is where you can do some, some obscure uh, things, but one thing is you can change the brightness. This is only at 50% right now, but this can actually really get quite bright. Okay, and I'm gonna go back. Uh, stats, temp units, so that's Celsius, Fahrenheit, timeout, that's screen timeout, update. Languages, there's eight languages available here, so if your English is not your first language, there's probably something to help you. Smart boost, which is kind of interesting. I, I'm not gonna talk about it now. Uh, and then exit, which we're going to do now. All right, guys, so this is an EHE chip, and I can't really uh, just show it off without talking a little bit about temperature control mode. So uh, if you're interested in temperature control mode, take a look at this portion of the video. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through every single thing that there is about temperature control here, but I do want to just show you a little bit of how it works. So um, you can get to the main menu by holding right on the joystick, which I showed earlier, but you can also do it by five clicking here. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, and that takes us into our menu. I'm gonna go into mode. We can see we're in wattage. I'm gonna choose temperature control. Now there's two kinds of uh, temperature control here, which they, they describe on their website. I'm not gonna talk about it now, but I'm gonna just stick with constant. Uh, we can choose our material here. So we have NI200, uh, SS316, um, and that's it these days. Okay, so I'm going to do SX316. Room temperature, you can choose this. Um, I haven't found it makes a huge difference, but if you have a vague idea of your room temperature, you can choose it here. Um, again, I wouldn't necessarily beat yourself up and try to get the exact temperature. You can just kind of guess, uh, but I'm going to just accept that. It's going to ask me to read my ohms. I can lock it or resample it. Uh, I'm going to lock it. Okay. All right. So 
let's take a look here. Now, uh, let's just talk about, you can see here, instead of having some big wattage numbers, we see this, it says NORM or NORM, okay? So what is that talking about? Well, that is basically the heat level, okay? So one of the things that's really interesting about this temperature control that they've done is when you put an atomizer on, it it changes all of the um, it changes automatically changes all of the settings in here uh, to match the the um, type of vape that that the chip thinks would be good for you. Um, and what it does is it basically automatically set up, sets up several profiles that are labeled according to heat. And you can choose those profiles. So what does all this mean? Well, instead of putting an atomizer on, reading your resistance, and then you have to go in and kind of figure out what voltage you want and, uh, you know, uh, what temperature is good. This kind of all figures it out for you. Uh, divides those ideas into five different profiles and then you can just choose from one of those five profiles so if you're interested in temp control but you haven't gotten into work well or maybe you just want it to be a little bit easier uh, this is a really really cool thing so i'm going to click middle here and click again um, and we can see again we have a nice little prompt so now we have up uh, up down and right to go into the settings so i'm just going to show you up and down now so this will change the heat profile that we want. So we have normal, warm, hot, cold, cool, and then back to normal. So those are the profiles that are automatically set up. Now, uh, whenever you put an atomizer on. So let's click right to go into the settings. Now, this is where if you want a sort of traditional temperature control experience, you can go in here and modify each one of these profiles. So it's a little bit hard to see, but there's actually three profiles here. We see the cold profile, the cool profile, and the normal profile. So the cold is set for 200C, cool is 205, normal is 210. Uh, let's keep going down. Warm is 220 and hot is also 220, but with higher uh, voltage, okay? Uh, so, you can go in and actually change the voltage and the temperature for each one of these settings. So if you just wanna choose one and make that your personal profile or whatever, you can do that too, okay? Uh, so I have found the temperature control on this. I'm not a big TC person, but I really liked how this is set up. You know, you put an atomizer in and then you say, I want a hot vape, I want a cold vape, and it, it just kind of does it all for you. And then if you maybe have something you don't like the way it's vaping, you can go in and you can change the settings yourself. Um, so boys and girls, this is gonna be pretty much all my, inner, my overview for the temperature control. Uh, it's very, very good. And um, I have actually used it quite a bit. All right, everyone, I just wanna thank you for making it to the end of the video. Uh, this is has been the intro video for the Snowdrift. Uh, again, I'm really, really happy with this product. Uh, I love the chip. Uh, when I chose this chip, actually, you know, I with my first regulated mod, the Avalanche V2R, which um, uses the same chip, people often ask me why I didn't use chips from some maybe other companies that have uh, you know, a very good reputation. And I actually made a two prototypes with two different chips and compared them. So one had the SX35J, one had another chip. And I ended up preferring this chip more, and that's why I went with it. Um, it is a little bit uh, more better value for money as well. Um, and overall, it's been a big win. Uh, it's super easy to navigate you don't have to connect it to a computer to access all the functions. It's kind of already just ready to go. Um, people say they don't like the joystick, but I've understood that EHE has made some big changes to the way the joystick navigates. Um, and now I think it's really great. I mean, it takes up much less real, space, real estate than having maybe two or three buttons here. Um, while you also have basically the equivalent of five buttons on the screen, right? You have up, down, left, right, and pressing center. So you actually have more control and it shows in the interface. You don't have to go through um, and select things or, you know, it's just pretty much ready to go. And it minimizes the number of clicks that you need to get things done. Um, so 
This is going to be available very soon uh, at snowcapmods.com. Uh, if you have never ordered from me before, my site, uh, I, you know, I operate a website with a web shop. My products are almost always available. At least one, t you know, kind or color of every product is, I try to always have something available. Um, and you can go there, pay with your card and it will ship out, uh, with, you know, shortly within your order and you'll get it usually within 10 days. Um, if you're in the United States, probably more like five. Okay, so head on over to Snowcap Mods to purchase your Snowdrift 21700 100 watt box mod.